Jim's Garage Toys. Today I'm going to be tackling a project on my wife's 2010 Toyota Prius. I kind of call it the triple threat here on this car. Um, I'm going to be installing a new EGR valve. Uh, I have already replaced the EGR cooler and that way I have one to clean and take my time on, make sure I get it clean really well and I would like to do this more often than the every hundred or hundred thousand or so miles, maybe a little bit more than some people do. Um, I would like to do it every 50,000 and keep that system nice and clean and if I have a spare part, I can have that clean, prepped and ready to go whenever I want to do it. So I also purchased a new intake manifold which I have right here. So uh, this intake manifold has very small passages right here. And for anybody that has tackled this before, they know about this, but, and I did attempt to clean these out once before, but I really think that the, what I wanna be able to do is take the old one off and literally dunk the whole thing and soak it and truly clean out all of those small passages so I know that they're clear versus just trying to clean them out with a wire brush like I did before. So if I have the spare, I can do that and know that it's in like new condition when I'm ready to put it back on. Uh, my wife uses this car all the time, so I'd like to get it, uh, get these parts swapped on it so I can do that quickly and it's ready to go for again while I worry about cleaning them. So the other part that I will be doing will be a new EGR valve. So I got this kit from Toyota. It came with the gaskets. Um, and so I will post the part number for that and for the exhaust manifold. And so the cooler attaches onto here. And like I said, what I want to do is make this to where I can do the swap with clean, ready to go parts very quickly. And then I can take my time cleaning them and having them ready to go in the next 50, 60,000 miles. So she loves the car, she's planning on keeping it. So I wanna make sure to keep it running in tip top condition. So with that said, we will tackle this and I will go ahead and lay out how you have to do it. The first thing you need to do is remove the wiper cowl, uh, just to create some room to get down in there and uh, so we'll tackle that, get the wiper cowl off, get the intake off so I have access to the intake manifold and we'll create some space and we'll get these parts swapped out. Thanks for joining. First thing on the agenda, we'll be pulling off the wiper cowl just to create some more space while we're working here. got three bolts first for the wipers themselves. There's a little cover right here. I usually just will pop off. It's a 114 millimeter nut for that. There's two for this one. clips, one on each side, you just push down, That's something I usually use a screwdriver like this, and then it will pop up. So, so this is the, the little piece right here, you can see the tab right here in the middle, you just push down on that. When you reinstall, you push up from the bottom insert and then push down and you'll feel it click and it's 
So once those are out, then this will essentially unsnap. And just kind of lift up and give a little tug. Next step is to remove the wiper motor itself and then this tray and the whole thing is off. So, there we go. So here there's just a little tab on both sides. So. those two. This just lifts out and then this one I usually will take off once I get the, the motor out. So and those are just 10 millimeter bolts. So I use my best friend here for there's one up here. a rubber grommet on the back here it just slides in so it's easy to slide that out so, and then on this this little tab on the bottom you push that and then that pulls off and then I flip this one around and it's nice with this because then I can actually see the tabs I'm trying to compress. <clears throat> so now this is free. Now I can take out the tray. The tray literally consists of a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. So it's just a matter of taking them out and then the whole tray slides out. But then you can get to the back side of the, of the parts that you want. The EGR cooler is right here, or the EGR valve is right here. And then the cooler's attached to the back of that. We'll remove this section so we can get to the intake manifold and we'll swap it all out and put it all back together. said it before but I love this tool makes things nice quick easy work of it so then once you take those out in this entire tray lift right out there we go the whole tray is out So now I have all this space to get down in here. With the tray there, it just makes it a lot more difficult and this is a tight enough job to do anyway. So let's make it as easy as we can on ourselves. That's off. Now you can see the EGR valve, EGR cooler, and it runs around into intake 
I'll give you a little close up of all this. So here's the EGR valve right here. It connects to the cooler, which is right down tucked in there. Right down there, you see it hiding between the hoses. So, and then this wraps around through this tube right here, this pipe, right into the intake manifold. You'll be able to see it easier once I get the air cleaner off. So we'll go from there. Next step of this operation is to start to remove the air cleaner. So once again, a bunch of 12 millimeter, or 10 millimeter, not 12. So unsnap the air cleaner. Lift that off, twisting that off, and I'll twist off. Here is your math sensor right here. So you just want to clip that. I'm trying to show it to you. It's right here on the back <laughs> end. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I can't get my fingers in the position I want them in. There we go. So this just there's a little tab right here. You push and it lifts up and pops that off. So, wherever your air cleaner assembly. So, I'll we'll take that off. Take the air filter out, which doesn't look bad at all. And then, down in here, there's two more 10 millimeter bolts that we want to get to. are a little farther down so I'm going to a longer extension here. Well the one's farther down, the one's not there. So into this box and it wraps around it so I just pop it out of its little clips there and then that will slide off of that part of the intake amazing how much space you start to get in here once that is removed. So a little closer up of the intake manifold. I got the new one out to help you see too. So, so there's a clip right here that we need to loosen and that goes right here. <clears throat> so then we have our bolts holding it on. So there's one two, there's a third one over there, four, five, and you kind of see those right up here. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So, and luckily they are all, they are all on accessible from the top. Yeah, this one does not have any from the bottom. There is something that is screwed to the side of it there. And then this is where our EGR valve leads into, which is right there. So I'll undo those two. And uh, there's something, and there's that brass colored one down below there. So we'll, we'll expose that for what it is and we'll get to that. And uh, <coughs> so, it's not terribly hard to, to pull out, so we will go ahead and start working on those. 
All right, time to remove the five bolts here. This one also goes through the dipstick tube. position. One, three, and five are bolts. So that's the five upper bolts. So we got those off. So what we need to do is we need to take these two 10 millimeter ones off. free up the EGR pipe there. I removed the last piece of the intake pipe there from the throttle body and <clears throat> now I can actually get to these two bolts and two nuts and pop that off because that's got to be exchanged onto the new intake right there. So I've got to take it off anyway so might as well do it and then this piece right here has one bolt that goes in right there. And there's just a tab that sits on, on the other side. So this line right here, I was gonna take off, but I, as soon as I started to break it loose, I realized it was coolant. So I'd rather just leave it connected to the throttle body, slide it out of the way, and then attach the throttle body back. So I'm gonna take off those four bolts now and continue. That's with the intake manifold out. Boy, look at all that space. There's your PVC. Only electrical I see is coming over. It's the AC condenser and the water pump. Boy. You ever got to do your water pump? That sure would make it easy. Just take the intake off. It's not that hard to remove. Wow. Okay. So now we got to start working over here and getting this garbage off. So once again, here is the EGR assembly and the coolers attached to the back of it. So. The process here is trying to uh, get these, I can't remember, I think there's five of them, five bolts. There's two on the back side on the cooler. There's one here. There's a bracket here. And I think there's two back in here. So um, the one is kind of the bolt from hell that everybody talks about. So that'll be the tricky one to get. But I'm going to start getting this stuff off so we can access it as much as possible so there's that there's a 10 millimeter right here holding this bracket on so let's get that off right there if we take the stud out then gives us more mobility trying to maneuver
This is when this actually right here comes in real handy. And that is because there's a quarter on one side and a three eighths on the other. Is the cables, the hybrid cables. So there you can see that stud. <laughs> a long sucker. Okay, so that first one's out. So that's good. I'm trying to remember. Okay. That looks like 14. Uh, to those two back ones but it's that bottom that bottom one the nightmare one and there she is all the way in the back okay so i just took out the bolt from hell as everybody calls it and on this one the one i took out before you can see it it's right there so th this sits just like that in the car that one's easy to get to. So, but that one is just a pain. But you wouldn't think it would be that hard, but it's just difficult because you've got coolant lines and uh, hybrid electrical lines and everything else running down through there. And you just, it's just hard to get to it. So now there's two more right here at the very back of it. And I'm gonna take those off so I can pull the whole assembly out. I'm going to blow out the, the cooler that I swapped on. I haven't even cleaned this one yet. It's all... Uh, I, I don't even know if you can see the light coming through it. No, it's completely plugged up. Oh, just a little bit of light. So I still haven't cleaned this one yet. But I'm just going to blow that other one out um, and then reassemble. If I could get to the two nuts that right here... I just, I tried before, I just couldn't get a wrench in there. It's too close to the head. So that would have been easy to just leave all that, leave the cooler, but so be it. It'll be off this time. So normally there would be the coolant connector that attaches to it. Oh, it's just hard to see. <laughs> well, it attaches right here, and then there's one up top also, and then there's two down here on this pipe. But I think what I'm going to do is just getting it loose was what I needed to do to change the EGR valve. And then I disconnected the pipe on the back that connects right here, so that way I can just kind of blow it out, and uh, I'll leave everything else connected. But normally you would uh, do that. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt and this bolt right here off. And those are the two that attach from this point right here. And that way I can exchange out the EGR. So I just took off the two nuts holding the EGR valve to the EGR cooler because I was able to pull it back and get to them. And now... This will slide right out. Look at that. So, there's the old EGR cooler. I have to undo the pipe, put that on the new one. That goes to the intake manifold. So, kind of a little nasty on that end. Let's see how, what it's like on the, on the 
HER cooler and blow that out. But we'll change this, clean out the cooler, and then put the new intake manifold on and bolt it all up. So, <clears throat> the new EGR valve comes with a new gasket, the little kit I bought. And it's nice because this actually has tabs on it, so you snap it on and it doesn't go anywhere. So I removed the EGR pipe, ran a brush through it just to make sure that it was nice and clean. Okay, so the pipe is back on. Got the new gasket on this side. So this just snips right on like that. Well, it's easy when you actually have some play in the EGR cooler. And that one bolt that's a nightmare, the bolt from hell that everybody calls it, I am not reinstalling. That's what I've seen the trend to be. This thing is plenty secure. It's got what four, four or five other mounting points to it. So I'm going to do what a lot of other people do, and that is make my life a lot easier the next time I have to do this. If I don't have to mess with that bolt, that stud then, um, man, I <laughs> can't tell you how much easier my life will be. So let me get this other nut on here and then we'll continue. So I got the two bolts so you can see them at the back of the cooler. So those are back on. So this is all in. And just putting those two on, it's amazing how snug it is. So. I've got to put this one on here, this stud and nut. And you know, really between those, those that'll all hold that perfectly still. And then these two go to the intake. And then this bracket attaches to it also, which is another mounting point. So this goes like that. So lots of places that it's secured. So I think what I will do next Let's go ahead and get the new intake manifold on. Cleaned out the throttle body. Actually, it wasn't too dirty, so, but since I'm there, clean that out and uh, it won't take long to bolt everything back together now. So the one thing I did is I had to transfer these two longer studs from the old intake manifold to the new one. And this has already got a gasket on it, which is nice. I do want to clean up this surface a little bit now. So kinda, so there's two studs here for the top two, because two and four have a nut on them, if you don't remember. There we go. Slides back into place. Nice. So, actually, it wouldn't have been too hard to get to that as it were. Right there. So, okay, now we can position our throttle body back on. Gasket also. So. Now this has two longer bolts and two studs. These are ten millimeter. Okay. Let's 
Got a little hand check here on these. Those don't need to be uber tight. Unless that rubber gasket seals, which it feels good. Okay. So, just got the five, the three bolts and two nuts. Re tightened up. And then we did our four two bolts, two nuts, holding the throttle body on. So this right here connects to there. So this little clip right here snaps in there. So this goes to the math. So this little one right here connects there. Always push till you hear that click. So now everything is attached there. Everything's attached here. I just need to put the air assembly in. Got to put the two bolts on holding the EGR tube to the manifold. And then put the stud in here and a couple of nuts and bolts up there. And it's all done. So we'll go ahead and I'll do that real quick. And then we'll install the air box and reassemble the wiper cowl and wipers. And then we'll be done. All right. Just as a wrap up, we've got all the intake installed again. Just the reverse of taking it off. There's the new... EGR valve, everything's buttoned up tight. New intake manifold is down there. There's the old one, so I can go ahead and do that. Clean that up good. And now, everything is done in the engine bay other than just putting the cowl back together. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll wrap this one up. Got the wiper cowl all reinstalled. Wipers back on. Everything is set. The final piece. And snapping this back on. And we are set. So, so one more project done. So that'll be good for. I want to try to do this and swap this stuff out every. 50 to 75,000 miles, I figure it won't have a chance to get carboned up too badly at that point and be easier to clean. So, anyway, that is all we wrote for the Prius today.